Herzlich willkommen bei Hoffnung ist keine Strategie, dem Podcast mit spannenden Strategiegeschichten von gestern, heute und morgen. Mein Name ist Christian Anderwood und im Gespräch mit echten Strategiemachern wollen wir den Mythos Strategie entzaubern und aufzeigen, wie ihr mit strategischer Arbeit in diesen volatilen Zeiten gewinnen könnt. Heute haben wir für euch eine besondere Live-Podcast-Folge, nämlich mit Sharon Berkman, Ownerin und auch Chair of the Board von Berkman International. Jetzt fragen sich vielleicht die einen oder anderen Berkman, was ist Berkman? Berkman ist eine ganz besondere Methode. Viele würden vielleicht sagen oder kennen auch das DISC-Modell, Persönlichkeitstest. Der Berkman-Test und der Berkman-Report und die Berkman-Methode sind ganz, ganz spannende Dinge, in denen man herausfinden kann für die Selbstführung und auch für die Führung im Team, sich selber und das Team auch besser zu verstehen. Und wir nutzen Berkman auch in unserer Strategieberatung, um sozusagen im Strategieteam auch die Strategietypen besser kennenzulernen. Von daher war es für mich eine ganz besondere andere Ehre auch als Bergman Coach. Sharon hier, die Tochter sozusagen des Gründers und Erfinders, Dr. Roger Bergman, in dem Interview zu haben. Und ich freue mich, euch heute diese Folge präsentieren zu können. Uh, so, welcome and thank you for joining today here in Stuttgart at the Bergman Conference. So, first, me allow me to introduce myself, just that you know what we are going to do here uh, today. Uh, so, my name is Christian Underwood. I'm a strategy software entrepreneur and um, strategy maker and most recently author and host of the Hope is Not a Strategy book and podcast. So, and of course, I'm a Berkman coach. So that's why I'm also here. Um, and my commitment to understanding and harnessing human potential um, has led me to facilitate over 100 Berkman coachings now, especially when it's uh, coming to owner and corporate strategy processes. And uh, therefore, um, it, it, it's really a different foundation of building up your strategy when you know your team, when you know yourself and you can lead differently. So therefore, it's my really my pleasure and honor uh, to introduce you again, um, Sharon Bergman-Fink, here today in Germany. Uh, you have enabled countless professionals like myself to see beyond the surface, to recognize uh, the genuine motivation, needs and drives of individuals we work with. So uh, you're a thought leader, also an author, second book, as I learned on, on, on uh, Tuesday, uh, which is called Creatures of Contact. So for each and every one of you, it's not about just the first book, The Bergman Method. You maybe know everything about that, but the Creatures of Contact, I think you can underwrite that statement. And that's the second book by her, a Forbes bestselling book. Um, so uh, really appreciate that. So and uh, you're really a driving force and guiding line behind Bergman International, serving now as owner and chairwoman of the board. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please join welcoming me, Sharon Bergman. Thank you. No, thank you. The honor is really mine. And I so wish I were fluent in German, but I can feel the excitement and the energy. And, and you know, there's that nonverbal part that comes through. So uh, I'm just, I'm already humbled and, ex and, and feel like this is such a fulfillment of the dream that my father had all those many decades back. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you also very much that you uh, agreed to join in for a podcast session. So Hope is Not a Strategy, we have a German and an English version. Mm -hmm. The German-speaking version is, uh, let's say, the number one strategy podcast in the Dach region. So, yeah. for the, for, so it's really that a lot of CEOs and a lot of uh, yeah, uh, managers are listening to that podcast. But I can download it in English as well. Uh, you, yeah, you can also download it in English. So we have a separate English where, where only English versions are. So, but it, it's less, but... Well, I love the title, Christian. Um, yeah, thank you very much. But but I borrowed it from an American politician. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So so, and then translated it in German because uh, Giuliani said to the campaign of Barack Obama, "Hope is not a strategy." So that, that, there it was originally for me comes from. But uh, today, I'm, normally, I'm not saying that because I'm not in line with the, with that guy. And um, nor am I, but that's all we're going to say. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Sharon, um, can you a little bit for the audience here and also for our listeners, um, 
yeah, explain a little bit the essence of the Berkman method. What, what is for you really the essence, what it's all about? That's actually an easy question, yeah. Christian. <laughs> And the reason is because if you ask my father, what is it, Roger Berkman, that makes the Berkman method so unique and so special? He would say, it's most people. When you understand how the perceptions and the perspectives of yourself, both yourself and others that you live and work with, how they see the world around them, how they basically anticipate and expect others to behave, when you have a deeper understanding of this, you have an ability to not only know yourself better, become more self-aware, but also more deeply appreciative of the different strengths. And with every strength, there's a limitation that goes with it. Uh, but he, he would say it was it, it originally the Berkman method in his thinking was only going to be questions about most people. Then as he came back uh, and studied social psychology after World War II, he was actually jumping on a brand new, what they called radical concept at the time. And this was taking social psychology or psychology of any kind into the functioning workplace. What he felt though is that he wanted to work not in clinical psychology, but with people who were like, like himself, just regular ordinary people in the workplace and allow them with a deeper understanding of self and others to be more effective, more insightful, and, and in that way, create much better, healthier relationships. So it's, it's, it's the social, it, you know, it was called first a test of social comprehension. Okay. And he felt that if you understand people in the relationships, that's really the key mm -hmm. to a successful career yeah, and a absolutely. successful life. Absolutely. The very first uh, questionnaire that was designed by a graphic artist when he was convinced that test of social comprehension was too long a title. Mm -hmm. Someone said, Roger, just put your name on it. Be done with it. It's <laughs> Berkman method. Uh, but uh, it had a kind of a 50s logo with a key in the center. And yeah. my thinking is that he felt knowing and understanding self and others mm -hmm. awareness was the key. Absolutely. The key to growth and success yes. in personal and business in relationships. life. In relationships. In yes. relationships. Whether at home or at the office. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So uh, we, have, we have something also in common. My father and my grandfather, they both so served in the U.S. Air Force. Uh -huh. um, oh, they and, were flyers. Yeah, yeah, they were flyers. So, and uh, uh, it's, it's also funny that they uh, lived the most of their time in Houston and also in El Paso. So oh, it's a small they're, they're, world. They're so, it's a really small yeah, world. Yeah. So, so well, really great that we met now. Well, here one Germany. funny story is that when he came back, because he knew how to fly an airplane, he thought, well, I'll just get a job in commercial airlines. I'll be a commercial yeah, pilot. Yeah, sure. He wasn't tall enough. I mean, being tall does not run in our family, as you can tell with me. Uh, <laughs> but the good news is, because he didn't join uh, one of the airline companies, he went into social psychology, and we're very glad of that. Great. So uh, let me just, you just started um, talking about the, the journey that started in mm -hmm. the 50s with your father. But can you, yeah, take us a little bit more on the journey when maybe you took over. So, so what is let's say, the strategic or growth journey of Berkman okay. in the world? Okay, for all of you entrepreneurs who've started a business, you need to know that when, when my, my dad, with my mom's help, first began working, well, first of all, she took a job she didn't really like because it was a way to pay the bills so my father could do his research. Mm -hmm. And his research consisted of interviewing all kinds of people in the workplace, Salespeople and engineers and lawyers and doctors and teachers. And from that, he was able to then create these, what we call items. An item is a question, mm -hmm. each question on, the, on the, the questionnaire that we all take. And, and really start to put together this picture of what it means to think about the duality of personality mm -hmm. that we are able, because we are complex human beings, we're able to 
to come up with a way that is socially desirable, mm -hmm. that is presentable and effective and positive in our daily contact with people, and that we also have something deeper and also very, very important, and that is our interior selves, our in, what he called our motivation and our behavioral motivating needs. So these needs really became the thing that makes all these decades, makes Berkman stand apart from even now, 72 years into it, yeah. all other assessments. But that said, the first 10 to 15 years were not very profitable. They okay. really struggled. Mm -hmm. um, then in the mid 60s, he was able to connect with a, a brilliant statistical expert, Dr. Roy Mefford. And Dr. Roy Mefford had in about 1965, 66, the ability to use a mainframe IBM computer at the medical center in mm -hmm. Houston, Texas. And so not only did Dr. Mefford uh, convince my father that a mainframe was a very good idea, but he also worked with my father to create the areas of interest. So mm -hmm. now we had self, we had most people, and we had the kind of motivations, other needs that come from our own interests. Third dimension to the Berkman. Yes. So now, now it's basically complete in concept. Putting Berkman, however, on a mainframe IBM mm -hmm. got my father in some big trouble. So r around 1966, is, I, I was a middle schooler, you know, about 14 years old, and he would come home and say, well, uh, they, the American Psychological Association didn't kick me out yet, but they threatened to. <laughs> and they said, you can't put information about a person on, on a computer, on a machine. So here mm -hmm. we are. Uh, uh, but after a while, they decided, okay, maybe he could. Uh, so the, then in the 70s, Lynn Green, who's one of our gurus back at Berkman, just said the other day, you know, when I started working at Berkman years ago, there were exactly 11 people that knew how to interpret a Berkman report. Nine of them worked in the office. Okay. And so, you know, we're not going to scale. We're not going to grow very fast if we don't start training and teaching other people how to do this. Well, of course, that was, that was exactly the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so they began sort of this primitive version of training. By the 70s, things were getting a little bit better, got a little bit bigger office. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, all, it, all they did was work out of the tiny apartment. Right. So a home office was nothing new. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and by the 80s, uh, they, were, they were gaining some traction and they were putting information on the, uh, the, old, the old version of the computer, the PCs. That was a new innovation at Berkman. Hmm. So we went from the mainframe to the PCs. And then in the 90s, they started, they were one of the first to, dad was walking with me one day and he said, Sharon, we're gonna go paperless. And I went, what? You know, we had, everything was, on, you know, questionnaire, everything was paper then. This was before email. You know, this was 1993? Three, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, um, and but already they were planning to go into a digital dong dong software system with the, it was called B2000, because at that point, B2000 was way off in the future. Mm. Uh, so, you know, dad, at the end of the day, dad was no technology engineer or a software expert. However, he was an entrepreneur and he was a visionary. And sometimes I say, you know, he was an entrepreneur before the term was fashionable. But he, he just called himself a struggling businessman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at, at, at any rate, this, this happened. B2000 actually was that and increasing the, the length of the certification making it a bigger course, and of course, a co course that cost a little more. Yeah. Um, that actually started to really propel the growth in the, in the late 90s. Okay. But by 99, 2000, um, we had a, a young associate that said, you need to put this information now on the internet, directly on the internet. No more dongles, no more software systems mm -hmm. that you install in people's companies mm -hmm. and charge a subscription price. You need to go on the internet. So Berkman was the first assessment to go on the internet, but not certainly within a year or so, everybody followed suit. Yeah, sure. And so you can see how all, all through the years, technology has is enabled mm -hmm. in, in, in been the growth factor. But here's what is impressive for me, and that is that the core 
backbone of the Berkman, this self and most people, mm -hmm. is really still at the, at the heart of it. That's what makes it, that's what makes it worthwhile and the technology enables it. Absolutely. Yeah. Th thank you very much for showing that innovation journey that, mm. that has uh, become. So if we now look at the organizations today and especially in Germany, we ha have a big discussion now or see a change coming. So we have young people now, we call that Generation Z. Yes. Or the, the new work thing. So people at the workplace are more interested in meaning in clarity, purpose, things like that. So really important parts that you also cover with your new products. Yes. Um, so what role do you think um, Berkman Method can play here to bring a little bit more of that, yeah, Well, I, I, I think it's absolutely the right thing. And I'm thrilled that this young generation is so wise and so wanting to achieve this. Uh, I, I think all along, Berkman needed to be profitable enough to grow mm -hmm. and to stay alive and to keep producing results with new products. But it was never the, the goal of my father nor of myself to just be a huge dot-com bubble business. Mm -hmm. we, we always felt exactly as you're describing with the, the new yeah. work, yeah. the Gen Z people. Yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to hear this. Okay, really, really cool. And I think the Berkman method, it, it, it's really human centric. Yes. So, and that, that's really important. And I think that's also why we all love Berkman, because it helps us explaining this complex thing, which is not a machine, it's a human being. Yes. And it's not so easy. And at the end, you have to work with it. So uh, even <laughs> if you work with yourself. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, right. And it's really, really complicated. So, um, so you talked a little bit about the technology logical innovation. Mm -hmm. So now we're in the age of artificial intelligence. Yes. So we take it to the next level. So what do you, or, or are there any plans or what do you think in, in such a world, uh, human interaction in Berkman play? In terms of what Berkman is doing, we have looked at, I mean, artificial intelligence is machine learning, sure. as you know, yeah. and it's been coming for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. So many years ago, our top a uh, statistician, psychometrician, Dr. Patrick Wadlington, was already probing the concept of looking, what he called it, BITS, Berkman Item Testing System, okay. which might, if, if he could bring it to the point of being useful, might enable us to sharpen some of the questions or make it a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that even though sometimes we get a comment that uh, 30, I used to hear this all the time, okay. 30 minutes, this kind of takes a long time. Mm -hmm. But n lately I have not been hearing it, which is interesting because people seem to be more in a hurry than ever. Mm -hmm. But I think it's because they realize one assessment brings so much information anyway, in, and it can be used over the career. So what's a 30 minute or so it's investment nothing. of your time yeah, it's to cover that much? Yeah. But as far as AI, um, of course, it may be because I'm old or maybe because I, if you look at my Berkman map symbols, mm -hmm. my, my symbols are so much on the people side. Okay. But when the title creatures of contact means that we have to have healthy human relationships and human connection in order to survive. Mm -hmm. And we, we want the Berkman to really serve the purpose of enabling and bringing people to a point where it's easier for them to see not only their own value, but understand the needs and the values of those creatures that they live with and work with. Absolutely. So thank you. So I take that as humans are the next big thing. I, so I would that's what I would hope and think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So thank God uh, that it is that way. So, um, but what do you think that, yeah, if we use Berkman, so you're now starting a little bit on that way, so just some, because I'm an ideator, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I have deep blue uh, components. Um, so I thought maybe also for organizational development, how would it be to develop, you know, knowing all the, all the needs and uh, motivators in a company yes. and start with the help of the digital uh, tools to create a purpose statement, not just by writing it yeah. down, but 
building and also the values of the company from the real existing people and their needs. I think that would be a brilliant idea, Christian. And I think that, you know, if you really hone in on, on your particular strengths yeah. and then can take into consideration the strengths of the rest of your team, and then from that, realize, okay, this is our why. This is the mm -hmm. purpose of what we're mm -hmm. doing. And this is how we're going to serve the needs of the community and of the world. Yeah. That would be fabulous application yeah. of the Berkman. Yeah, absolutely. Because today it's, you know, formulation yeah. sessions, workshops. Yeah, and they spend so much time. Absolutely. And so much money, by yeah. the way. So, yeah. you know, we, and it's not accurate. No. Huh? What, what we can bring is hard data that's objective. Sure. And from that, they can bring the personal, subjective, and contextual part of yeah. what, what they're doing. Yeah. But you could get there quicker if you absolutely. have the insights. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we think on that <laughs> uh, in the innovation pipeline. So, but we're sitting here today with so many fabulous, great Berkman coaches mm. with different experiences. Um, and yeah, maybe... They want to know what is the next big thing. So we have seen a lot of news coming. Norman presented that. Uh, but but is there still something in the innovation pipeline that could be interesting for them? <laughs> well, all right. Uh, now, I was told by the Houston team, now, don't say too much. They want to keep a few things under wrap. Okay. I'm not supposed <laughs> So I'll say what I can. Okay. But I will tell you that for quite a long time, we've, we've been, we've had a goal of making leave behind information on a mobile device, mm -hmm. something very friendly. Okay. And, I, you know, the other day, Norman and I were talking about, I have a, a fitness app on my watch, and it tells me every day if I'm getting enough steps in, and it gives me that feedback. But um, Berkman is a little more complex than that. So it's been a, it's been a major undertaking mm -hmm. to get a meaningful uh, Feedback loop, yeah, I, I, sure. I guess I could call it, on, yeah. on, on a mobile device. However, I didn't say this here, but we're working on that. Okay, and, and hopefully, really cool. oh, it's finally going to be soon. Well, thank you for sharing. So I'm really looking for the circles. Uh, if my needs well, are fulfilled today, <laughs> how many steps should I take? Yeah, that would be yeah, for, amazing. For your physical energy need. Yeah. yeah, for my physical energy need. Yeah, absolutely. So if we can match this and uh, sell that to Apple, that would be <laughs> really great. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I, I, I'm using Berkman at, uh, you know, especially at the strategy process. And this is obviously we, a strategy podcast, yes. what we're doing today. Um, so for me personally, the human being is the major factor in the strategy process. But if we look at the history of strategy, uh, it's been a little bit different, more as we want to be objective mm -hmm. uh, in all, uh, so a, a fact-based thing. So for me personally, that's the way Berkman fits perfectly in and it creates more a kind of a team approach. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that uh, we can use Berkman in, in such settings. So that's really amazing. Thank you, Christian. You know, companies, no matter how big they are, mm -hmm. often rise and fall on what happens with their people. Absolutely. And, and I think, especially when it comes to strategy, it's 100% mm. people driven. Oh, yeah. yes. I mean, yeah. the leader influences the entire Yeah organization. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And that's why we use Berkman, let's say, sometimes upfront, the first strategy workshops, mm -hmm. before we go inside the room where the battle happens, yeah. because then it's a different battle. Yes. yes. Then, it, then it's not longer a battle. That would be an incredible outcome. And I, yeah. I applaud you for that. I think yeah. that's exactly the right yeah. approach. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we're, we're now finally at the end. So and normally our listeners at the podcast, but maybe also the audience here is really keen to get some yeah, concrete advice. And in the end, you're running a family business. Huh? <laughs> yes. Now, now in the third generation is that yes. right, with your daughter. Mm -hmm. So um, and, and maybe because most of the people here are self-employed. Mm -hmm. So and it's and it's all about yeah your secret of producing personal and entrepreneurial growth. So what is what is your key message to them? You what know, is important? What is the secret to life? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So why uh, not in my podcast? Yes. I, I think I might need help from the audience here. Yeah. But no, I I think honestly, uh, it's 
it really all comes down to our relationships. And Berkman is, my father all the time would say, what Berkman is, is a relational or a motivational instrument or tool. And yet it's just that, it's just a tool. At the end of the day, if Berkman doesn't have important people like you completing the task mm -hmm. for us, then we're not Berkman. And, and we have no, no power whatsoever. Um, so I, you know, that's what I, another, I, I believe so strongly in how our consultants make us, make us the, the success stories that you were describing earlier to this evening. Mm -hmm. And without that human con dialogue, without a human connection, we're just, we're just data on a page. Somewhat like my husband being a singer, you know, Wagner, Verdi, the great opera composers, it's just black notes on a piece of paper mm -hmm. until a, a good singer can bring them to life. And you are the people that sing our song, and I could not be more grateful. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a... I just ha have a copy of my book. Uh, oh, thank you. That, that, because then maybe we can take a picture with that. But that would be perfect for the podcast later on. Yes. Thank you very much, Jared. Lena's taking the picture. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, and Thank Christian. you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.